Okay, uh, sorry for the delay in uploading this. Um, this is the second part of the Wheel of the Year Tarot. After some interruptions. Hopefully the traffic won't be too loud when the Blue Jays. <laughs> but, um, I need to get this finished up while I have a chance. I have a weird shift tonight, 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. So, I'm trying to get stuff done before I go to bed. Alright. So. We left off. We did, um, Major Arcana. The Cups and the Pentacles. So, we are going to start with the Swords. So, we have Ace of Swords here. And it looks like it's becoming Fall. Um, dude's kind of sitting there. It almost looks like a desert. So he's like meditating in a desert. And there's two owls. Um, there's a partially eclipsed moon maybe. Hard to tell if that's supposed to be a depiction. A regular moon or an eclipse. Um, you got the vine going up the sword. Curtains being pulled back. So yeah, I guess that goes with the usual symbolism. We've got two of swords next. And they're fighting over a giant hazelnut. Okay. Okay, interesting. And then some other sort of nut that they're standing in. A chestnut? Maybe? Oh, maybe that's a chestnut. I don't know my nuts, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah, two swords. An older man, a younger man, maybe, you know, teaching them how to fight over nuts. <laughs> Interesting symbolism with all the nuts, man. Okay. Three of swords. We've got... Huh. Well, I'm not even going to try to count the birds in the background, but we've got two different owls and a crow. Very interesting. Not the typical bleeding heart third party situation kind of a thing. But, um, uh, one, I think both go real kind of judgy. <laughs> Owls tend to look kind of judgy anyway, so. You got that. And it looks pretty barren. With like tumbleweeds and stuff. And the sun is pretty bright. So, then we've got <laughs> a beaver, a beaver, wow, or is that a groundhog? Hard to tell. So, it is the middle of winter, and it's a pine cone, you still see some fall leaves, so it might be a little sooner. Um, the bushes are devoid of any leaves. And he's just kind of looking over his shoulder like, <sighs> it's winter. Alright, let's see if I can move that over a little bit. Five of swords. So there's one, two, three for the one guy. One guy has none. Looks like he's got a stick and that's it. The other guy's got his sword and then he's going to pick up one that looks kind of busted. So, interesting. Three guys, five swords. Yeah. Six of swords. Oh, look, the swords are not in the boat causing a hole. <laughs> that, that always kind of bothered me. Like, why are you getting in a boat where there's swords stuck through the bottom of the boat and probably going to cause a leak? Anyways. So, yep, he's pushing this boat off and leaving that stuff behind. Um, the fall leaves are blowing in the wind and all that. Interesting. Then we have Seven of Swords. She's got a peacock feather, that's awesome. 
Got a fur coat around her. It's winter. So we've got the five of swords up there, and then two of swords. And three people involved. Interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Especially the peacock feather. So I'll probably have to look up the peacock symbolism before I start drawing any of these. Just in case it comes up all. Oh, eight of swords. There's a sick kid and mom's taking care of him. He gets sick in the winter. And the whole reason we get sick in the winter is because we're all indoors in close quarters and not getting enough vitamin D. So get your vitamin D. Get some sunlight. You know, make sure you're healthy. Practice good hygiene. Okay? Yeah. That's how to stay healthy. Er, No, Eight of Swords, sick kid being taken care of. Oh, Lord, it's Hitchcock's The Birds. <laughs> Only it's bats. So she's being driven batty. Literally being driven batty in Nine of Swords. Um, being chased by these bats, even though I've never been chased by a bat. I've encountered bats, but they've never chased me. Oh, she might be hallucinating those bats. Who knows? Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Interesting that there's eleven. So you'd think that there would be nine. Oh my! Kneeling at a grave, and there's a crow, of course. Ten of swords. So, elderly person probably visiting a loved one. So, maybe they're close because uh, the widower effect is a real thing. People who are very, very close tend to die close to each other as well. So, then we have. Princess of Swords. She's got a little dagger. She's got cannons on her wall. It's fall, maybe a little bit of winter. And she's looking for something. So she's watching for who knows, expecting to be raided or something. Interesting. Maybe she's looking for the Scala. The uh, Knight of Swords. Huh? Coming in on the black horse. Sword raised. Oh, look, he's a lefty. Interesting. But he's coming out of the castle. Hmm. So maybe he's going towards whatever she sees in off in the distance. Yeah, no winter. Look at all these people in their, like, purple and their fur and... Looking kind of grumpy there, Queen of Swords. Looking really grumpy. Yep, she definitely looks like she's ready to lop someone's head off. So, standing on her porch in the winter, ready to like cut people's heads off. Yep, definitely Queen of Swords. <laughs> And the King of Swords looks about as grumpy as her, but he's also got a book along with his sword, and he's sitting on his little throne right by the, the fireplace, looking pretty comfortable even though he's grumpy as hell. There's points setters, I believe, in the picture, and which are poisonous to animals, by the way, and children. Okay, so that's the suit of swords. Get these a little cram together so that they get mixed up. And I'm just kind of like trying to shuffle them into the box as I get through these. After I 
Okay, they're already a little bit shuffled when I try to use them. All right, last suit, suit of wands. Oh, fire. Oh, this way more pleasant. Holy crap, it's a fire fairy. And it's like a maple. So it's spring. There's a wreath. Look at all these, uh, these flowers and butterflies. Almost kind of look like a little devilish figure. A little sunflower belt. But yeah, like a fire fae. Interesting. Fire elf, maybe? I don't know. Interesting that they have mythological, well, supposedly mythological creatures on the base. And we've got a giant kidney bean. <laughs> Is that a kidney bean? Mm. Yeah, so we got a giant bean. And they're uh, trying to tame the vine growing out of it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six crows. Interesting. And um, yeah, big old vine growing out of there. Kind of reminds me of the big climbing rose I have. It's about eight feet tall now. Pretty nuts. Maybe nine. I don't know. I didn't measure it, but it seems to have stopped finally with the cold. But I kept making Jack and the Beanstalk kind of jokes with it, and it was not amused. It was not stopping. Oh, look. Three of Wands. This is kind of like. Almost looks like she's wishing on a falling star. That's interesting. So we get fireflies and a cute little pupper. And she's in her nightgown staring at the moon. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting uh, symbolism in picture there. I'm trying to get through these real quick so I can move on and read them with them. So, four of wands. So we've got a picture frame being built out of it. And a tree house. Oh my god, I would love to live in a tree house. I would seriously love to live in a tree house. But like, no, not like a kid's level tree house. I'm talking like fully functional tree house. And they're kind of expensive, but would that not be awesome? Or at least have one to, you know, go to to get away from other stuff. But if you're already living out in the woods, I guess you're not near all the chaos. But anyways, it's like a little love shack up in the tree. That is so cute. I love it. Right, he's still building it, but she's all like thrilled with it already. That's pretty sweet. Different depiction of the four lawns, but I like it. I really like it. Kind of hits home personally here. Five of Wands. Lots of young men arm wrestling. That one looks all serious. That one looks like he's carefree. Guess he's a little more confident. Who knows? Who knows? Probably a little more of a friendly competition. At least on one part, you would hope. Not serious fighting. But, you know, it could be petty. Let's see. Six of Wands. More flowers. And she's being crowned with some flowers. And it looks lovely. There's flowers and stuff. I guess confetti being tossed around. Mm, kind of celebratory, cheerful kind of thing. Yep. It's good. Some friends around her and a kid. Interesting symbolism. Seven of Wands. They've got. Hmm. Sacks of stuff. Almost looks like it could be animals being tossed in. I would hope not. Hopefully they're just burying stuff that's not living or formerly living. 
Do they look a little, I don't know, devious, especially with the storm clouds and stuff. I don't know if that's supposed to be a mangrove tree or what in the background of the swamp. Burying stuff in the swamp. Okay, that's a little bit creepy. We're gonna move on. So, we've got a falconer with the eight of wands. Falconry takes a lot of work. A lot of discipline. You gotta be a little fearless too because those claws, whew. Birds of prey are very powerful. But it looks like he's bringing home a message. So, he's kind of like a carrier pigeon, only a little more dangerous. Looks a little surprised by the message. Interesting. I like the different uh, symbolism in this. Oh, look, it's a scarecrow. So, nine of wands. Dude's making a scarecrow. crows. Apparently they're not being really scared off by this scarecrow because they seem to be flying towards it, but whatever. Whatever works. I guess they're outsmarting them. Then we have ten of wands. We've got watermelons apparently. And they're going to carry a big basket full of watermelons up that hill. I do not envy that job at all. Seems like pretty heavy burden to be carrying, but hopefully it's worth it. I don't know, I'd be planting those watermelons a little closer to home. A little bit closer to home. Or maybe, <laughs> you know, build a cart with some wheels. Princess of Wands. Hmm, she's got a letter. Looks like a sword sticking there. She's got roses. There's some other flowers. There's a fountain kind of there. Hmm, so there's three birds in one section, four in another. Seven. So 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, maybe they're doves? Hard to tell. And she's kind of looking off in the distance like she's expecting a message to come through. And here he comes. Knight of Wands. Come galloping in on his little brown horse. Looks like he's got a pack of messages. And a plant stuck in his hat. In his hat. So. Okay, so there's one that actually has like a handle on it. Interesting. Almost like a sword. But yeah. Good fiery energy. And that horse is coming fast. So maybe she's looking out for him. Queen of Wands. She got some flowers on her porch. There's a Leo symbol. I forget what kind of flower is that. I don't know if that's Celosia. It looks a little bit too long. Could be though. Now she's all decked out. Looking pretty happy. Fiery in a good way, I guess. And finally, King of Wands sitting there with his pupper. Also, Leo symbol. Um, yeah. It might be lilies. Got people working in the background. The sun shining bright. And he's sitting on his throne looking all proud of himself with his Roman sandal type boots on. Weird. But okay. Whatever makes you comfortable, dude. So that is the Wheel of the Year Tarot. Um, this is the second part and I will be uploading this and linking the two so you don't miss it. And I will be doing readings with this uh, very soon. So I will also be doing introduction to the other two tarot decks that I got, but that will have to wait until this weekend. So tune in, um, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, alright?
I hope everyone has a great night.